welcome to Faithfully Parish Church Online. I'm Gregor McIntyre and I'm delighted to welcome you to this service for the week beginning this the 9th of May. It takes only little faith to see the sacred in the extraordinary. To have faith that the sacred is in the ordinary though takes courage. It takes courage to believe the mundane can be enough that grace can emerge even through the dull, the slightly disappointing, the not quite right, the not quite as intended, not really what you'd hoped for, the clumsy, the awkward and the imperfect. Let your act of faith be enough, enough for the Lord who loves you and knows that you are here and rejoices that you will praise his name in our first hymn, A New Commandment. Let's pray together. Let's praise our God for his amazing gift of love in Jesus, a perfect love that casts out all fear. Lord, for love which liberates us to ask questions and explore, to express our doubts and welcome new ideas and to live with ambition as we build kingdom. Thank you, God of adventurous love, for the love that enables us to respect our own existence, to reflect and remember, to recognise our own needs and reaffirm the purpose of our life of faith. We thank you, God, of determined love. For love that helps us to communicate with one another, to express trust and respect, share heartaches and vision, to convey love and mercy. We thank you, God, of reconciling love. For love that inspires us to cheer on those around us, to build up, to comfort and grow in faith together. We thank you, God, of nurturing love. For love that encourages us to express our faith, for scripture and prayers, for hymns and stories told and retold, for Bible studies and sermons, we thank you, God, of fulfilling love. And above all, we thank you for a love which we cannot wholly capture in words. And yet, it speaks of our trust in Jesus, of our reason to worship our Heavenly Father and to be grateful for the inward work of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, we thank you for the words that Jesus gave us that we might speak of love's effect in our lives as we become salt and light in his name, in this world that needs his love. Amen.
Friends, the church is reopening on Sunday the 23rd of May. Whilst it will be good to get back together, there are limitations on how it begins at first. For example, there will be no singing and you'll have to wear masks. Following the advice of the Church of Scotland's COVID task group, we will ask members and worshippers to book their place for a service. This will help us with the track and trace requirements and ensure that the church is not over capacity and nobody is turning up on a Sunday for a service only to be turned away because there's no room. When you arrive at church, your name will be checked against a list of expected people. The church has a capacity for just 28 places, which can be taken by a household or by a single person. Following social distancing, mask wearing and sanitising your hands, you will be guided into the church and shown to a seat. You will be asked to remain in place throughout the service. The service without hymns will be shorter and isn't an excuse for me to preach for 45 minutes to get us to the normal hour that we spend together. In a moment, I'll give you the mobile phone number you can use to phone or text to book a place. But first, it is important that you know that to begin with, we will hold weekly church services on a Sunday morning at 11am and on a Wednesday evening at 6.30. When you contact Dorothy Cunningham on the dedicated phone number on the Wednesday, Thursday or Friday ahead of the Sunday services ahead, you will need to know the following. How many people are coming from your household? Your contact telephone number and how prepared you are to come on a Sunday or a Wednesday morning depending on the bookings already in place. If capacity has been reached for a Sunday, you can ask for a place at the Wednesday service or ask to be given a place at the next week's Sunday morning service. It's likely that the regulations in place will change as we hopefully enter lower levels but this is how we have to do it for the time being. I'll update you as we enter the summer. And the number on screen just now is the number you can use to reach Dorothy, who will take the details from you. The number will be shown again at the end of the service following Ewan's voluntary. And you can copy that number and use it, not this week, but the following week on the Wednesday, Thursday and Friday to book yourself a place on Sunday the 23rd. And thanks in advance for all your help in getting this right so that we can keep you safe. Now, we're going to continue with our worship turning to our scripture story this morning. And Sheila Farkerson is going to read for us from John chapter 15. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I choose you and appoint you that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. Amen. See if you can finish this phrase. It's not what you know, it's who you know. And this came up for me during the week. I had to sit in on a meeting of the Church of Scotland's 
pension trustees and you will not be surprised that in the presentations that were being made and sitting among people who are professionally involved in investments of pension pot sized amounts of money that there's some jargon and some of it goes over my head quite a lot actually but I do know more than I used to I know that PV01 is a measure of the sensitivity and the value of assets and liabilities to a 0.01% change in interest rates and I know that the IE01 is a measure of sensitivity to inflation. Now, bully for me, that's because I've been sitting in at meetings, been trying to pay attention and pick up as much as I can. But I have to say, when I heard the phrase floating point securities, that went right over my head. I had not heard that phrase before. But lucky for me, it's not always what I know. Sometimes it is the people I know. It is the people sitting around me. I don't have to know absolutely everything. I'm learning, but I know that the people around me have consistently asked the right questions, are filled with uh, years of experience and knowledge, and if I don't know what something is, they will. And if they're sitting, nodding away at the meeting, then at that moment, I can take it on trust that the jargon that's being used explains something which is obvious to them, appropriate as well, and useful. So at those moments, whilst I could ask sometimes, I just let those who know better nod their heads and I keep quiet. But knowing the right people is always important. We love it when we are engaged in some task and we can say to ourselves, I know just a person to ask. When I need to know something about video cabling and microphones and cameras, I knew that I could ask Kenneth Morrison. He would know and that was a great help because he's patient is interested and because uh, we've known each other for a while he knew whereabouts my level of knowledge was and could speak to me appropriately. Then again there are other times when you're just glad to see a familiar face. I know that's important for families preparing for funerals. They like to go back to the same undertaker. They like to go back to the same minister knowing that in among all the stresses they don't have to meet somebody new and get to know them and trust that they will deal with all the matters in hand as carefully as they would want because it's been done before by these people. It's a huge responsibility but one that is gladly met by ministers like me as well as the undertakers that I know locally. And who else? Well, do you, know what, do you know a joiner? Do you know a plumber? Are you always happy that you can call on them? Do you take your car to the same garage? Almost certainly, if you're happy with the way in which they treat you and attend to your car, you will. Because you can't do it, but you know someone who can. Well, there's some matters in the Christian faith which we can stretch to use this phrase as well. It's not what you know, it's who you know. The good news is you don't have to know everything about the Christian faith. You don't have to know all that there is to know about the Bible. You don't have to have sat your degree and undertaken practical work learning how to preach and conduct services. You know somebody who knows how to do that and the church trusts me to do that with you and for you. But you don't have to know all these things for another reason. The Lord our God 
is generous, merciful, and he knows what we need. So it isn't a matter of what we know, it is a matter of who we know. And the great joy of the Christian faith is we can get to know Jesus. Simply get started with it by reading the stories in the Gospels, reading through passages in the New Testament, and learning more and more about Scripture and the Bible as a whole for sure will help. But if you never strayed from the Gospels and the life of Jesus, you would get to know him. You would learn to love him. You would learn to be able to anticipate, what would Jesus have me do now? Well, I've read this story. I remember this miracle. I remember what he said to this person or that. And you would know that that person is with you in this moment. So we learn to get to know Jesus. But there is a further trick. Rob Bell, an American church leader and a valued speaker, has a thought for us all. He said, if the, church, the gospel isn't good news for everybody, then it isn't good news for anybody. He believes that it's when the church gives itself away in radical acts of service and compassion, expecting nothing in return, that the way of Jesus is most vividly put on display. He goes on to say that Jesus commanded us to love our neighbour, that we are all created in the image of God and are all sacred, valuable creations of God. Everybody matters. And if we treated people differently on the basis of who believes what and who knows what, then we would be failing to respect the image of God. The book of James tells us that God doesn't have favourites, so neither should we. In fact, Matthew 25, in the story of Jesus uh, separating sheep and the goats, we see there Christian asking, when, Lord, did we see you hungry or thirsty or homeless or imprisoned and help you? And Jesus' answer is, when you did it for the least of my brothers and sisters, you did it for me. It's not what you know or what you know to do. It comes down to who you know. And we know our Lord Jesus.
And now let's pray together. Gracious God, you call us to love you with all our hearts and mind and soul. You challenge us to love our neighbour as ourselves and you tell us through Jesus that the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, to love. It sounds so easy, so straightforward, but we know in reality it is difficult. Gracious God, forgive us the feebleness of our love. Too often we only love ourselves. Our every thought is for our own welfare, our own esteem, our own pleasure. Gracious God, forgive us the feebleness of our love. Too often we reserve our love for an exclusive few, our families, our closest friends, our fellowship and church. Gracious God, forgive us the feebleness of our love. Strengthen our ability to love, building up our family and friends, patient of mistakes and quick to help, generous in praise and slow to criticise, growing confidence in others, Gracious God, we should always trust your infinite love. Pour that love into us so it overflows and lets us cope with love refused, managing to keep loving the difficult, able to pay the cost of another's demands on us, helping us to stay close to the footsteps of Jesus in our life. Gracious God, we can always trust in your infinite love. Amen. Friends, if the big intimation was about how church is starting, these are our other intimations. On Monday nights, you can meet up with church friends to go for a walk from the church car park. Turn up at 7pm and head off for an appropriately socially distanced walk in groups that are the right size to comply with current regulations. Note please that the church hall will not be open to meet inside. Dumbartonshire Guilds Together's Summer Rally is on Wednesday evening the 12th of May and will be available on the church Facebook page at 7pm on that night. It will also be available on YouTube and as a WhatsApp link that will be issued to those whom we know access in this way. In addition, a DVD of the service will be delivered to Guild members who usually receive DVDs. If you're going to need help to watch it, just get in touch with me and we'll make sure we can help. Thursday night, well, Thursday night uh, sees the prayer group continuing to meet weekly at 7pm. You're welcome to join us or send me a message asking for prayers to be said for someone or for a situation that is on your mind. And then at 7.30pm, a series of half-hour Bible studies has begun at 7.30 with stories from the life of Elisha. And each story of Elisha will make connections to the Gospel. There's room inside the 30 minutes to learn, to question and to catch up with church friends. Friends, these are our intimations for this week. We're going to finish our service with blessed assurance, after which Ewan will play our voluntary to close our time together and you'll get a reminder of the church booking mobile telephone number at the very end of that.
Go now to follow the way of Jesus. See others as he did. Dare to give freely as he did and to love unconditionally as we know he did. Go embraced by the source of life, love and hope in the company of the word of life, encouraged by the breath of life. Amen.